Hi, I'm Pastor Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today as we dig into the sign of Sagittarius the Archer, the fourth sign in the Maseroth. God originally painted his uh, gospel message across the sky in what we now call the Zodiac or the Maseroth. Think of the Zodiac as a giant uh, sky painting, which is like a giant 360 degree circle. And this circle is divided into 12 equal houses, much like cutting a pie into 12 equal slices. Each slice of this pie has one major and three minor constellations. Now these constellations are known as the sign of the zodiac. And we'll be looking at the original names of these constellations and the names of the stars within them as we interpret God's story. Now last week we looked at the constellation of Scorpio, the scorpion. Today we will look at the fourth house of the zodiac, which is Sagittarius the archer. The sun is in the house of Sagittarius from November 22nd through December 21st. This house reflects the final triumph. We see Christ the conqueror and Jesus the God-man as victor over sin and Satan. But before we dig in, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that Christ is our victor. Thank you that he ultimately defeated Satan and that we as believers no longer have to fear. Lord, I pray that you would anoint my words, that you would anoint this message today, and that if there is anyone listening to it that does not know you as Lord and Savior, they would be moved to make that commitment to you. Use this message, Lord, to build your kingdom. I thank you, thank you so much for putting this gospel in the sky that everyone can read it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's look at Psalm 21, verse 12. For you will make them turn their backs in defeat. You will aim your bowstring of divine justice at their faces. Psalm 45, 2 reads, You are fairer than the sons of men. Graciousness is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Psalm 45, 5 reads, Your arrows are sharp. The peoples or nations fall under you. Your arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. And lastly, let's look at Revelation 6, verse 2. I looked and behold a white horse of victory whose rider carried a bow and a crown of victory was given to him and he rode forth conquering and to conquer. Sagittarius, the archer, is the fourth constellation in the zodiac and concludes the final chapter of the first book. The zodiac is divided into three books with four signs or major constellations in each book. And the first two books deal generally with that which has been and is being accomplished by Christ. The third book concentrates on Christ's return as king and judge of the earth. Now, in this constellation, we see Sagittarius. He's an archer, and this archer is part centaur. It, he is a centaur. He's part man and part horse. Uh, the word Sagittarius means the archer. In Akkadian, he's called Nunki, which means the prince of the earth. Being half man and half horse, we see that he also has a dual nature. Now, unlike the centaur that we saw in Virgo, giving himself up to die, this centaur is victorious, the risen and conquering king. He comes now as the archer, not offering himself as a sacrifice, but destroying Satan, who made that sacrifice necessary. The popular Greek poet Eratus's poem, Diocemia, was written around 300 BC, and it refers to Sagittarius. Midst golden stars he stands, refulgent now, and thrusts the scorpion with his bended bow. The human portion of the centaur is drawing a bow and aiming an arrow at Antares, the very heart of the scorpion. Here we see Christ, the conquering one, whose arrow is aimed at the scorpion, or the devil. 
We discover God's truth in the zodiac by looking at the ancient names of the constellations and the stars. The brightest star in Sagittarius is called Name, which in Hebrew means the Gracious One. Another star in the constellation is called Al Shuala, which in Arabic means to conquer. Another is called Al Warida and means who comes forth. So here we have a picture of the Prince of the Earth, the Gracious One, coming forth to conquer. Now every constellation is accompanied by three smaller constellations called deacons. And the names of the stars in these constellations further flesh out the main theme of the House of Sagittarius. Exodus 15.1 reads, Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord, singing, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Psalm 16, 11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. The first deacon in the house of Sagittarius is lyre, the harp. The harp or lyre means praise for the conqueror. Lyre is shown as a harp combined with an eagle or something like an eagle rising with a harp. It is a picture of joyful celebration over a victory. Another bright star in this constellation is Vega, which means he shall be exalted. Vega has been this star's name down through antiquity. It is the name that God himself gave to it, that he should be exalted. By his great power and might, he is conquered, and we now sing his praises. Now another star and lyre is called Salufat which means ascending. Shaliak means eagle and is another star found in this constellation. The harp pictures gladness and joy and praise for the action of the great archer with his bow and arrows. And the eagle is the enemy of the serpent. And this eagle is in the attitude of triumph. Many of the modern atlases represent this figure as an eagle holding the harp, expressing triumphant song. This constellation pictures the enemy destroyed and the fulfillment of God's promises. Psalm 21 verses 8 and 9 read, Your hand will reach out and defeat all your enemies. Your right hand will reach those who hate you. You will make them as if in a blazing oven in the time of your anger. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath and the fire will devour them. Psalm 138.8 reads, The Lord will accomplish that which concerns me. Your unwavering loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your own hands. The second deacon in Sagittarius is Era, the altar. It's illustrated as an altar and is one of the southernmost constellations in the heavens. In fact, it's so far south Although at one time it was visible from the northern latitudes, it's no longer visible here because of the procession of the equinoxes. Era means consuming fire, prepared for his enemies, and it's seen as a burning pyre upside down, pouring fire into the lower regions of the outer darkness. Also in this constellation is the star El Mugamra, meaning finishing in Arabic. We're told in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 that Christ will come with flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not believe and do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He shall come with his mighty angels to be glorified in all those who do not believe. The unbelievers will be cast into outer darkness and consumed with everlasting fire. Friends, I don't want you to end up in the lake of everlasting fire. Please break free of Satan's hold on your life and make Jesus your Lord and Savior. God has clearly written in the night sky that Jesus Christ is his Son and will be coming back soon to judge the people on earth. He could return at any time. All you need to do is surrender your life to follow Jesus. I'm going to pray right now. And if you're feeling the nudgings of the Holy Spirit, please join me in prayer. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive my sins. I believe you are the Son of God. 
please save me. Help me live a life that pleases you. Amen. If you prayed this prayer for the very first time just now, please email me at CherylPickford at gmail.com. I want to help you get started in your new life of faith in Jesus. Now, in the ancient zodiac of Dendera, this second deacon pictures a throned human figure wielding a flail, the implement of threshing or bruising. He's set over a jackal, often identified with the devil. The throned figure has a name which signifies the coming one, the same as Scorpio. This constellation pursues victory over the enemy, thrusting Satan into the regions of darkness and the threshing and bruising of him beneath the feet of the conqueror, the beating of him down into final punishment. Let's look at Revelation 12, verse 9 through 11. And the great dragon was thrown down, the age-old serpent who is called the devil and Satan, he who continually deceives and seduces the entire inhabited world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom, dominion and reign of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our believing brothers and sisters has been thrown down at last. He who accuses them and keeps bringing charges of sinful behavior against them before our God day and night. And they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life and renounce their faith even when faced with death. You know, it isn't popular to believe in the devil in today's enlightened culture. But let me assure you, he is very real. If there was no Satan, why would God write about him so plainly across the sky with pictures of the dragon, the Leviathan, and serpents? And if Satan isn't real, someone's been really busy doing his work for him. He is the great antagonist against whom Christ is set in mortal combat. He is the father of lies and is constantly trying to deceive people into thinking the wrong things. He deludes humans into false religions by making them think they're true and dupes them into believing pseudo-scientific theories like evolution. But Christ is the great victory over Satan and will destroy him. The final deacon in the final chapter of the first book of the Zodiac ends with a picture of Satan being overwhelmed. In Sagittarius, this final deacon is the constellation Draco, the dragon. It is the dragon whose head is under the foot of Hercules. Draco the dragon is seen as a huge winding serpent, firmly under the foot of Hercules, who represents the victorious Christ. In Greek, drakon means trodden down. And here we see the dragon as the one who is trodden on, its head being bruised by Christ. The dragon is one of the most famous mythological creatures in the history of human thought. All cultures of the earth have dragons in one form or another. The serpentine monster is the universal symbol of evil. Where the serpent is the sly creeping deceiver, the dragon is the terrific oppressor with spikes, wings, and tail spouting fire and fury. The serpent and the dragon are one and the same, only in different modes of manifestations. The devil is called a dragon, that old serpent. And we find images of the dragon in all nations. Chinese and Japanese legend abounds with it, as do the pages of classic Greek and Roman poetry. The dragon is found in religious books, traditions, and ideas of men in all classes in all sections of the world and in all the ages. It is found in the Old Testament, in the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. Jews and Gentiles, Christians and heathens, civilized and savage, the Teutons, Scandinavians, and the Celts of Europe, as well as the myriads of Asia and the remotest islands in the sea, have it and connect it with the same family of ideas. And everywhere, the vanquishing of this monster is the work of gods, heroes, and saints. 
Now, we have nothing zoologically to serve as the origin for the idea of the dragon, and no man has ever seen a dragon, living or dead. But all men talk about the dragon and adopt it into their religion, their heraldry and art as the symbol of, for some well-known reality. In the constellation Draco, the dragon winds over the, at la, over the last half of the northern sky. His tail alone extends over the territory of one-third of the stars. Listen to Isaiah 27.1. In that day, the Lord will punish with his sword, his fierce, great, and powerful sword, Leviathan, the gliding serpent. Leviathan, the coiling serpent. He will slay the monster of the sea. The scripture looks forward to the day of Israel's ultimate deliverance. Now the brightest star in this figure is called Thuban in Hebrew, and it's located in the second coil from the tip of the serpent's tail. It means the subtle. In the Garden of Eden, the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field. And more than 4,700 years ago, shortly after the fall of man, Thuban was the pole star. And be, but because of the procession of the equinoxes, the pole of the planet Earth now points to Polaris, and Satan has lost his preeminence because of the work of Christ. Other ancient names for this star are Al Wade, which means who is to be destroyed, and Al Dib, which means the reptile. In the serpent's head, we find the brightest star, Rastaban, Hebrew for the head of the subtle, or the head of the serpent. The third brightest star bears the Hebrew name Athenin, which means the long serpent or dragon. Other stars in this constellation are named Grumian, the deceiver, El Athik, the fraudful, El Isia, the humbled, brought down, and Gainser, the punished enemy. Mythology says the dragon is the power that guarded the golden apples in the famous Garden of Hesperides, hindering man from getting them. Just as the devil thrust himself to keep in, to keep men from eating the fruits of the tree of life. Mythology says that this dragon was slain by Hercules, who is the astronomic sign of the one to come and the serpent bruiser, who stands pictured in his constellation with his foot on the head of the dragon, as Christ will conquer Satan. Now Satan is waging war against God's people. In the Christian life, we battle against evil rulers and authorities of this unseen world. But Satan is a defeated enemy. Although God and the devil are at war, we don't have to wait to the end to see who will win. God has already defeated Satan, and when Christ returns, the devil and all he stands for will be eliminated forever. Satan is here now, however, and he's trying to win us to his evil cause. With the Holy Spirit's power, though, we can resist the devil, and he will flee from us. So in summary, in this constellation of Sagittarius, we see the archer, the prince of the earth coming to conquer the dragon. And we see great rejoicing as the devil is cast out into the lake of fire. This concludes the first four constellations in the first book of the Zodiac. The names of these stars and constellations tell the pictorial story of Christ, delivering man from the penalty of sin. Now next week, we'll open the second book of the Zodiac, which more fully introduces the church and the work of Christ as it relates to them. The first sign of the second book is Capricornus, the goat. The picture of this constellation depicts an animal with the top half of a dying goat and the back half of a thrashing fish. I'm looking forward to introducing you to the names of these stars in this constellation and explaining how these names point to our Savior. If you're enjoying this series, please subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss any messages. And of course, feel free to share these on your social media platforms. Let's build God's kingdom together. May God bless you abundantly until we meet again.